Fisher left no will. Two million dollar estate. Wrangling continues over his estate. We don't know what his wishes were. This incredible circus over this two million dollars. It seems that even in death there is no peace for, for Fisher. Who's going to have the legal right to inherit Fisher's estate here because he's got this daughter. He's also got a wife, doesn't he? And he has two nephews. And the fact of the matter is, is only the nephews have proven a bloodline to Bobby Fisher. We're still waiting to find out if the daughter is his daughter, and we're trying to find out if the alleged wife proves that she's married to him. Bobby Fisher and I have decided to marry. I first met Bobby Fisher in 1973. We have been living together as mom and wife. I think that there was a companionship. I think she was more like a mother to him than a wife. And I think that by marrying her while he was in prison, he thought that that would somehow make him a Japanese citizen and that he would get out of being extradited. It was a great friendship because uh, Miyako was a very, very nice person and a trustworthy person. She loved Bobby and, and she did everything for him. Every six months, uh, he needed to get out of Japan because I think the visa is only good for six months. And he would go to the Philippines and sometimes to Hong Kong with Marlene. Chinky Kong. And the girl in the Philippines with whom he had the child, he had a daughter, we don't know if it was really his child. There's never been any DNA match. Kishai. Don't you? The girl looks nothing like him. Old. Bobby, the first time he met Marilyn, I think uh, he was kind of depressed at the time, uh, you know. So it was very important that somebody was with him, and somebody he, he would trust. Uh. He's very nice to Chinky and always calling Chinky in the telephone, then always is telling Chinky, always take care of yourself. For Bobby to write daddy, uh, <laughs> it means a lot, you know. Every month he sent me a money. He was seeking some kind of love, you know, love. He found it with Marlene, this human touch. He doted after Jinky just uh, like any father. Before I'm going to bed, he texts me about if I'm okay and jinky and he always and he always saying me I love you he said I deserve to have you know many <laughs> children <laughs> so that uh, my genes you know uh, my excellent genes will you know will spread <laughs> When Bobby was living in Iceland, he was in touch with uh, one of my sons, uh, who had been in touch. I was not in touch with him at that time. Bobby did not like his brother-in-law, Dirk. He was worried about his sister being married to such a man. This may be a scandalous statement, but. It uh, looked like uh, that, that family was most interested in getting money when he was dead. And I asked him if he was the father of this child. So he looked at me and said, Sammy, I don't want to go into that. DNA test has determined the late world chess champion Bobby Fischer is not the father of a nine-year-old Filipino girl. Iceland's Supreme Court ordered Fischer's body exhumed after a woman who had a relationship with Fischer when he lived in the Philippines made a claim on his estate. He was so fond of this little girl. I think he wished he was the father of the child. Miyoko knew that uh, these two are very dear to Bobby. Of course, Miyoko is also special to Bobby. Why not, you know, just uh, 
provide a little, no? I don't know why it has to go, you know, to this uh, wrangling in courts, you know. Uh, it's very sad, you know. I miss him because he was always calling me. Then he said always, always take care of yourself and jinky. I miss him so much. Then last week, um, I'm there in Iceland. I miss him. Uh, Fisher always seems to bring drama and controversy. He, he was so much of a strange character, and he ends up in Iceland. Uh, I guess this is the proper ending for, for his legacy.